let's explore the essential terms you will encounter in Relay.app. When creating an automated workflow, you'll need to consider the process you want to automate, the apps you want to play a part, the steps that should be taken, and the data you want to move between apps. These elements form the basics for a workflow. And the most basic way to understand a workflow is when something happens, then do something else. We call the when a trigger. A trigger begins or shoots off an automation and every workflow begins with a trigger. For example, if we want our team to receive a Slack message whenever a new Trello card is created, the trigger would be new card added in Trello. A workflow can't run without a trigger. It's what sets the automation in motion. After the trigger, there are the steps. Most of the time, these are actions across the apps you are using. In our example, it would be sending the Slack message. Each step needs to be configured using app objects and data fields. Objects are the collection of data fields available for a step, like the Trello card that triggered the run or if an Asana task was created and data fields are the data that's inside these objects. Now, a Trello card may contain dozens of data fields, but for our Slack message, we may only need the card name, the due date, and the card URL. This way, we send only the essential information in the Slack message, rather than overwhelming our team with all of the info. You can include multiple steps in a workflow. For example, we might create a new row in Google Sheets to log the Trello card details, and our workflow would now have two steps. For more complex workflows, Relay.app provides flow control tools like paths and iterators. Paths allow you to create branching workflows based on conditions, and iterators enable you to loop through a series of data points and perform actions on each one. And there are plenty of other advanced features that we'll dive into in subsequent videos, but let's look at one now, human in the loop. The human in the loop feature allows you to incorporate that human touch within otherwise automated workflows. And this is something that sets Relay.app apart, enabling you and your team to request and obtain approval before proceeding onto the next step in the workflow, request data input from someone, assign a task to someone and once complete, the all clear is given to move on to the next automated step and manually selecting a path. You can even automatically assign roles for these human in the loop steps. In our automation, we could add a human in the loop step where a team lead reviews and approves the Trello card or task before sending the Slack message. If approved, the workflow continues and the Slack message is sent. If rejected, it ends or follows a different path. When a workflow is triggered, it creates a run. You can view a list of completed runs as well as currently active runs for a workflow in the workflow editor. The active runs may be waiting for a human in the loop approval or they run into an error and need a fix. So we've thrown a lot at you, but to summarize, a workflow is an automated process that connects apps and services, and every workflow begins with a trigger that initiates the automation. After the trigger, there are steps, which are configured using app objects or data. Flow control tools like paths and iterators enable more complex flows, and human in the loop step incorporates human touch points within your automated workflows. Runs are instances of a workflow created for each triggering event. In the next video, you and I will build a workflow together so that we can see these concepts in action. So sign up, play around, and I'll see you in the next video.